Hey y'all, today we're going to be covering one of the most important topics of the semester, and that's going to be the topic of derivatives. Now derivatives give us a way of describing rates of changes of continuous functions, and it's going to be really important for us the rest of the semester, so without further ado, let's dive in. Alright, now recall from last time that we worked with the difference quotient in light of calling it the average rate of change. So, as a recall, the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h gives us the average rate of change between two points x and x plus h. Now we thought about that as just the slope of the line connecting the two points. Now, what if we let the distance between x and x plus h go to zero? Well, since h was the distance between x and x plus h, well, that is the difference, that would be the same thing as letting h go to zero. Now what we land on, if we do that experiment, is going to be called the instantaneous rate of change. And this can be found by letting the distance between x and x plus h go to zero, or, in, in the exact same manner, find the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient. Now this has a graphical counterpart, which we're going to get to. Alright, now let's talk about the graphical meaning of the instantaneous rate of change. Now remember, if I have a point x, and I have a y value, f of x, associated with it. If I have another single point, let's call a point way out here x plus h, meaning I marched h distance over to get to this point, I can calculate the average rate of change by just finding the slope of the line that connects the two dots. So, as far as our picture would be concerned, this would be the slope of this green line right here. Now the instantaneous rate of change that I'm after would really just be kind of a slope that's only right on top of x. So one way that I could get there would be by letting this distance h shrink to zero. So let's cut the distance in half just as an experiment. Well we're getting closer to approximating what the slope of maybe a tangent line would be, the line that only touches it right there. So let's see. All right, that's a better approximation. If we keep getting closer and closer, maybe go right here, we'll notice that that line starts lying flatter and flatter. And ultimately, what we'll end up with, if I may draw in red, will be a line that just goes right through that point x and not through any other points. Now the slope of this red line right here, which we can approximate by seeing the limit of all these slopes of these green lines as they kind of get flatter and flatter are going to lay on top of that red line, that's what our instantaneous rate of change is going to be. And yet again, we can figure this out by doing the following process. The limit as h goes to zero, the distance between our test points goes to zero of the difference quotient. because the difference quotient gave us the slope of each of these lines. And eventually we're going to finally approximate the slope of this red line, which is the instantaneous rate of change. This is going to be what we call the derivative. The limit as h approaches zero of our difference quotient. Now the derivative, f prime of x, really is just the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient. And now notice, if our function is f of x, all we really do to denote this, shorthand wise, would be to write f of x with a little tick mark, and yet again, that's going to be called f prime of x. Now this gives us both the instantaneous rate of change and the slope of the tangent line at any given point x once we plug it in. As an initial example, just to show that this isn't too scary, let's do the following. Find the derivative f prime of x when our function is given by 2x minus 4. Well, if we're looking for f prime of x, all we have to do is find the limit of the difference quotient. So this thing is just the limit as h approaches zero of. Now remember how to do our difference quotient. First step, find f of x plus h. That means plugging an x plus h in wherever you see an x in the original function. So f of x plus h would be 
2 times x plus h minus 4. Minus the entire function, so minus all of 2x minus 4. And last but not least, divided by h. Now, doing a little bit of algebra. This is just the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, the 2x distributes, 2x plus 2h minus 4. This minus right here distributes minus 2x plus 4 all over h. We can now do some canceling and notice the 2x, they both cancel, and then also the 4s. So what we're left with is just the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h divided by h. But hold up now, one more thing cancels. The h's even cancel. So in this case, this is just the limit as h approaches 0 of 2, which hey, plug in 0 wherever you see an h, hint there isn't any, so all we're left with for an answer is 2. This tells me that the derivative of the function 2x minus 4 is just 2. It also tells me that for no matter what x, the instantaneous rate of change is always going to be 2. Which makes sense because 2x minus 4 is just a line with a positive slope of 2. Alright, now let's try one that's just a little bit more complicated. Find the derivative evaluated at 1 because when we land on a derivative, it really is just another function, so we can plug numbers into it. So, find the derivative evaluated at 1 if the function is f of x equals 3x squared minus x plus 7. Well, if we're after f prime and we want to even plug in 1 to it, we really need to find the rule first. What's f prime of x? Well, recall that that was just the limit as h approaches 0 of our difference quotient. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, here comes the algebra part, and the algebra part really is the tricky part for this. So just kind of keep your head in it and really get at it. Plugging in for f of x plus h, what we find out is that we get a 3 times x plus h squared minus parentheses x plus h plus 7. That's all of x plus f of x plus h. Subtract the entire function minus parentheses 3x squared minus x plus 7 all divided by h. Now if you really stick your nose in it and do out the algebra, what it looks like we're going to land on will be the limit as h approaches 0 of, this guy right here will end up becoming, a 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus, distributing in, x minus h plus 7. Distributing in the negative right here, minus 3x squared plus x minus 7, and yet again divide by h. Now what you'll see is that we get yet again a lot of cancellation out, which is important for us. For instance, the 3x squareds cancel, the x's cancel, and the 7's cancel. So what we are left with, if we look up top, would end up being a 6xh plus 3h squared minus h, all divided by h. From here you can think about factoring out an h, but in effect, one h cancels from everything when we divide out by the h, leaving us with the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, what was left on top, a 6x plus 3h, and don't let it trick you, we're even going to have a minus 1 right here. And now in taking the limit, as h approaches 0, last but not least, we'll get a 6x minus 1. That's going to be what our derivative is. Now the problem asks for us to plug in 1 to our derivative. 
So the ultimate step would say, well, therefore, if my derivative is 6x minus 1, f prime of 1 would be 6 times 1 minus 1. Plug in 1, where you see an x. Doing out the algebra, it looks like we'll get an answer of 5. Now this tells me, by the way, how we interpret this, is this tells me at the point x equals 1, my instantaneous rate of change is 5. Or, if I zoom in really close to x equals 1, it looks like I have a slope of positive 5 at that point. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in today on our initial covering of derivatives by the limit definition. Now, some important notes to leave you on as far as dealing with derivatives when we have to do limits. Given f of x, the derivative is just going to be given by f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of our difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, when actually doing these problems out in examples, it pays to go ahead and simplify the difference quotient before trying to take the limit. Secondly, the derivative is just going to give us an equation or a formula to get the instantaneous rate of change at a given point. So once you land on a derivative, a derivative is just a special type of function that for any x you plug in, you get the instantaneous rate of change of that function f of x at that point x. So, with that being said, next video we're going to talk about some shortcuts. Hint, we don't have to do limits every single time. And we'll really kind of cover it a little bit more in detail, but as of right now, go ahead and go attempt the homework, and good luck.